Kebola has even a data. Barande kande kataya gabala. Eredele de di azove etali baradekai. We thank you, Father. We exalt to glorify your name in the name that is above every other name. Thank you, mighty God, that everybody listening to the sound of my voice, the grace, the power, and the anointing of God shall be seen touching them, transforming them, and may you do what no man can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Celebrate God, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. God, God is about to do great things in your life. Celebrate God for Pastor Tobias and uh, Pastor Fortune. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty word that we received this morning. Hallelujah. Be seated if you can. There are there are things that the Lord has been ministering to me. Hallelujah. And, you know, the Bible says he makes everything beautiful in his own time. Amen. The goodness of God is that you don't plan for him, but God has a way that he structures your life. Or he has already structured your life. And one of the commodities that is of essence or one of the commodities that mankind have to value and look into is what is called time. Say time. time. Say time. time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to be talking uh, on understanding spiritual communication. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we have heard the prayer. We have gone through the aspect of the word has been spoken. And the Lord has been emphasizing on how, on measuring on each and every gifting and calling. And one of the things that makes people not to survive is not understanding their environment. Hallelujah. Amen. So you realize that most of the times we, we get to a place whereby God brings in our lives people that complement each and every gift and calling and ministry that is in you. And that makes a burden now to be removed from you. And understanding now where you must measure on, you begin to delegate, say delegate. Yeah. So, so, so in, in, in the past days, there is a certain game that I, I was playing, a very complicated one. It's not a game that you just play, very complicated one, which has to do with understanding how to delegate duties. And your inability to delegate and inability to choose people with qualities of analyzing and an ability to, 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 to work on the information that you give them will result in your failure. So that is how life is. You have to understand that if you are carrying a great purpose and a great destiny, you can never go alone and you can never do it alone. No matter how great the calling of Moses was, he needed people from Egypt for his calling to become a calling. So you have to understand and realize that no matter how much you may become a teacher, unless there are students, your qualification is in vain. No matter how much you are a preacher, but if there is no audience to preach to, your calling might die without having its impact. So when God brings or when he gives you a calling, what signifies that you are carrying a great calling is that push to now begin to develop skills of communicating and gathering the zeal of allowing an environment of expansion in you and utilizing every person who is around you so that what God has brought into you may come to a place where it prospers. Amen. 
So whatever God has brought into you, there are a lot of people that God has brought into your life. Some of them, they might not be having the immediate ability you are looking for, but they are waiting for your mentorship that the ability in them can be unlocked. So we look for resources, not realizing that the resources we are looking for, they already are with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say understanding spiritual communications. Understanding spiritual communications. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh God. Communications. Can you see what I'm writing here? Praise God. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I heard what you just said. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So there are things that you have to begin to understand. I was speaking in the past week and I was explaining to us on the aspect of angels. That angels have been sent by God so that they can help believers. And you have now to begin to understand that only even through your calling, you have now to understand how to work with angels. Why? Because with human strength, you are limited. And also with your own strength, you are limited. So not only do you need angels, but also you need men. The Bible says, and Jesus grew in faith, in wisdom, and in favor with men and with God. So there has to be a combination of the spiritual and the physical in your life. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, one of the things and assignments that God has brought us into is to make mankind understand the dealings of God and how God communicates to mankind. I explained and I said, when you read in Genesis 1, say the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. All right. This is Genesis chapter number 1. You understand that through this chapter, when you read through this chapter, there are things that are brought out in there. The first thing that is brought out is God. All right? The Bible says God created two things. He created the heavens. And the what? And the earth. So God in himself, in his creation, he created the heavens and the earth. And you begin to understand that here where the heavens are, this is where angels reside. Mm. And here where earth are, this is where men reside. Mm -hmm. So now there has to be an understanding and interrelation between the what? The earth and the heavens. Yes, God does not stay in heaven. It is his presence that is in the atmosphere of heaven. Because the Bible says that heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. So in simple terms, heaven is his chair and earth is his mat. So the question is, who is he and where is he? Because when we talk about a man or when you talk about a being, we are not talking about the body. A being is made up of the spirit they carry and their intellectual capacity. That is what defines who they are. That is why the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you are defined by your intellectual capacity. And interchangeably throughout the Bible, there is an interrelation between the mind and the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the question now begins to pose that if mankind are to fire from earth to heaven to speak to God, and there is a channel that the Bible speaks, when you read your Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 and 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, the Bible speaks of an aspect where there is a mediation of the Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit, the Bible speaks that there is a way you can be able to speak to God as a man through the Holy Spirit. And that aspect is what is called a spiritual language. And we spoke about tongues. Now, when we speak about tongues, we need to understand the Bible says, he who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to men. Or do men understand him? But what happens when a man speaks in tongues through the Holy Spirit, he speaks to men directly. He speaks to men directly. So angels might be at an aspect whereby, angels might be at an aspect whereby they might not be able to hear him. Angels might be at an aspect whereby they might not be able to understand you. Amen. And Apostle Paul gets to a place where he explains a certain mystery. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Paul gets to a place where he explains a certain mystery. Listen to what Apostle Paul says. Apostle Paul says, Apostle Paul relates and he explains a certain deep understanding. And this is what he says. Apostle Paul says, though I speak in tongues of men, Amen. I also speak in tongues of angels. Amen. So I explained to us that angels there are things that you have to understand about heaven and angels. A similarity. The, fa the thing that you have to understand that angels also have a language. Mm -hmm. Alright? Angels have number one, a language. Angels have a language. And every language can be taught and can be learned. Yes. So angels have a language and they have a what? They are beings who have assignments. So when now a believer begins to pray in the aspect that I want to explain today, now mankind what brings a relation in all these things is the aspects of what is called prayer. Okay. Prayer becomes the common denominator. And you understand the Apostle Paul, remember what he says, that though I speak in tongues of men, I also speak in tongues of angels. Okay. Now, I explained to us that the more you speak in tongues, there's an aspect where you begin to command angels. Though you may not understand but the Bible tells us in the book where, in the book of Romans chapter number 8 that we may not understand how to pray but the spirit intercedeth for us with the groanings that cannot be uttered. Now, we are being told that there is an aspect where we might be insufficient. I'll borrow the scripture that you, you read to us when we were doing intercession. We said, I am sufficient through the Holy Spirit. That in the insufficiency of men, the Holy Spirit comes and brings men to a dimension of being sufficient. So now men through the Holy Spirit from earth get to a place where they have access to the common wealth of God or the environment of God. That brings men to a place where now you are allowed to decree that as he is in heaven, so am I on earth. So when you pray and you say lika bano vereta panegi ozivelei porada kimanai. There is an aspect where you pray in tongues according to Jude where you are edifying yourself. Because also God has given an incentive that as long as you come to him there has to be a reward. So you can pray where it can be repetitious whereby you are praying at that aspect you are charging your spirit. But there's a dimension where you pray where you are captured in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
whereby the moment you are praying, it is no longer just you, but you are now captured there. Have you ever been to that place where even when you are speaking, your, your tongue is caught and you, you remain on one tongue? Re, 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 And you are wondering what is happening. You feel like crying. And you are, you are just there. You, you, you are speaking and it, it seems like you are now speaking like a child. And you are wondering what is happening. I, I know that I have some tongues like Livro or Tambre, Kata, but I'm just here. Ika, ko, ko, ka, ko, ko, ka, 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 ka. You, you are wondering what's happening. You are now at that place where the Holy Spirit is now, is, is, is now, is, is now enabling you in your insufficiency. The Holy Spirit is not making you to be sufficient. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can we go further? So you understand that even when Jesus comes, he begins to teach us certain concept in depth about prayer that for years we may not have gone to the place where somebody go to Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. We might not have gone to a place of understanding of what he was speaking about because most of the times Jesus, when Jesus communicates here, he was not communicating in a language. He was communicating in figurative metaphors. <laughs> Welcome to geography. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So they might be called parables, but in those parables, what he was doing, he wanted to bring a, a close or familiar graphic picture of what the atmosphere of heaven is like. But as God, he couldn't really explain certain systems of the spirit. So he had to come up with certain things that men could understand that were closer to what he wanted to explain. So the question with many people is, if God is omnipotent, omnipresent, omni-knowing, so how should I pray to a God who knows it all? And what should I pray to a God who knows it all? Because you need to understand what made Jesus to become what he was. Was not that he came to a world or to an environment where men were not praying. Because even John, when he was there, the disciples of Jesus says, Master, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. So it means John taught his disciples to pray. But what made them to say, teach us how to pray, was that the prayers of Jesus were different. They carried results and effectivity. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. He was not just praying. There was results and there was effectivity. And that is the place that I believe and I would desire that us as believers we get to be. That every time when you open up your mouth, you are not just shooting bullets. Apostle Paul says, I do not want to fight like a blind person. Yes, sir. I want to hit the target. A boxer must be able to hit the target. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 6 verse 6. Matthew 6 verse 6. Matthew 6 verse 6. Uh -huh. When you pray. When you pray. Alright. Alright. So look at, look at what Jesus says. Because we are going to digest on this. Alright. So Jesus says. When you pray. Uh -huh. Go into your room. Go into your room. And when you have shut your door. Uh, into your room. Uh -huh. And when you have shut your door. Uh -huh. Pray to your father who is in the secret place. My God. Repeat that. And when you have shut your door. Pray to your father who is in the secret place. Uh huh. Uh -huh. will reward you openly. Amen. Who sees in what? In secret. Uh -huh. We reward you openly. Amen. Repeat that. And when your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
Now, you have to understand the points that Jesus brings out on the aspect of prayer. That's why I had to write it down. Jesus began to speak about prayer, and these are the aspects of prayer that he brought down. Jesus says, when you pray, what Jesus is bringing out is that if you are to pray, it has to be a decision. That's why he said, when? When it's an aspect of time. Okay. When it's an aspect of time. Have you ever read your Bible when the Bible says, and Peter and James were going to the temple at the time of prayer. Meaning it's not every time that should be conducive to you because we have different duties and we are different people. In your daytime, there has to be a specific time that you decide to pray. So he says when you pray, by the time you decide to pray, there are certain things you need to take into consideration at that time when you want to pray. <laughs> he says, when you pray, go into your inner chamber or go into your room. Have you ever read your Bible in the book of Ephesians where the Bible says, do not give the devil room? The room that is being spoken about here, he speaks of a room and the next thing that he explains, he says, shut the door. Say shut the door. Shut the door. The Bible is not speaking about a room in literal terms of the bedroom that you have built. Because this room is personal. I can be seated with you and I can enter my room and shut the door. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Now you understand that spiritually a lot of people have to get to a place where they understand the reason why the en how the enemy attacks men. Jesus explains this aspect of a room and it was explained when Jesus was now explaining to us about the Holy Spirit. Jesus begins to say, if you abide in me and my word abides in you. He begins to explain that inside you there is space that he himself is, can get to a place where he can inhabit. I don't know if I'm, 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 are you tracking with me? Amen. You can inhabit in the, in the space. You can inhabit in the space. What does Psalms 91 verse say? He say, who, he who abides in the secret place of the almighty. It begins to bring an aspect of understanding that there is the almighty and in the almighty there is the secret place of him. There are people that commune with the almighty but there are people that abide in the secret place of the almighty. When you hear something being called a secret, it means there is information required. Ah! I, I love the scripture when David says the secret things of God are with the righteous. So there are also secrets in God. And it is righteousness now that David is saying it is the key. That is why you realize that when we begin to Sort out the equation from Matthew chapter number one, six, verse 33. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. To seek something, it is secret. The reason why you are being said, his righteousness, it is an unlocking scripture to what David said when David says, the secret things of God are with the righteous. 
So the key to the secret is righteousness. And what is righteousness? The Bible says, and Abraham believed in God and it was considered to him his righteousness. So believing in God now becomes the, the, the magnetic field that brings men into a place of righteousness. And righteousness becomes a key to the secret things of God. How we have sorted a, a spiritual equation there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you read your Bible, in the book of First Samuel, chapter number 1, from verse 13, the Bible tells us about Hannah. The Bible says Hannah went into the temple. She decided, remember, she said, I will not eat and drink. She decided to go into the temple. And the Bible says when she entered the temple, she began to pray. Have you seen that? First Samuel 13. She began to pray to a dimension where Eli the priest entered the temple. But Eli did not hear what Hannah was saying. The only thing that was noticeable in the activity of Hannah was the moving of her lips. And when Eli got to a place where Eli asked and said, Hannah, are you drunk? Hannah answered the question that will unlock what Jesus said in the book of Matthew 6 verse 6. Hannah said, I am a woman pouring out my what? Pouring out my what? My spirit to God. Now, how is Hannah praying and she can't be heard? When you pray, go into your secret place or go into your room like a tortoise. And when you enter, the Bible says, Shut the door. This, 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 is, this is where the matter is. Shut the door. The question is, what are you shutting the door from? And what are you shutting the door for? Because this is an instruction. Shut the door. So you understand that every time when you enter into prayer, there's an activity that happens. When you enter into prayer, liver rose, talamanga, deborah, maange, dima, miaron, de malaka. And sometimes it can take you 30 minutes for the door to be shut. Until you reach to that place whereby it's no longer by intellectual capacity that you are praying. It seems like now you are invited into a realm. That place where you want to stop praying but you can't stop. The place where your mind cannot tell you to, to stop praying because now you are being enabled by the spirit. In your insufficiency, we are sufficient by the what? By the Holy Spirit. So when you enter into prayer, the first minute it seems like it's, it's, it's close by. To certain people, how do they shut the door? They will just start putting worship. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the worship, the door is shut. And what you are shutting the door with are outside interferences that may short circuit the communications between you and God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let us read what those things are. In Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. In Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. So you realize that there are interferences that hinder many people from praying effectively. There are interferences that hinder men to pray effectively. And the devil is very, very, very uh, in a comfortable place when we pray and we still leave the door open. Have you, ever been, have you ever been into that place where you are in prayer? And where we are praying? You're, you are busy praying and while you are praying, suddenly because that door is open, that devil will 
bring that picture of the time you kissed that girl last year. And suddenly, the frequency is short-circuited. Uh, don't, don't try to do as if you were born in heaven. <laughs> suddenly, the, 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 the frequency is short-circuited. And the atmosphere you are feeling, by the time you, re, you want to reconnect the atmosphere, it seems you can't connect anymore. Or you are in a deep place of worship. And while you are in a deep place of worship, and they are, we are worshiping God. And suddenly, you realize that the person who is singing begins to symbolize the girl you had a crush on. And your focus is shifted. Or the person who is in front begins to symbolize somebody who owes you money who is refusing to pay. And suddenly, because that door is too open, you, 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 you are removed from the atmosphere of the secret place where God sees. That's what the Bible says, he who abides in the secret place. And Matthew 6 says, the God who sees in secret. Meaning his eyes are more vivid in the secret place. When you come to this place, you don't come to this place to cry. Because he sees. <laughs> you come to this place to surrender. To give him time. That's why he said, shut the door. Let me take over. Mm. So the enemy will make sure that Throughout your life, most of the outside interferences becomes the blockage or embargoes to you having time in the secret place. And I assure you that many people know how to pray. Many people know how to pray. But the limitation to their prayer is the aspect of or the principle of abiding. Because it is difficult for men to focus and abide in one place. Their mind is always all over. It is difficult for a man to sit right there. And while they are seated, they begin to focus and meditate on God's goodness. I spoke to us yesterday and I said, if you can continuously change your confession, you see your life change. Do you know that the moment you begin to say, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, to yourself, not to people. Or if you can take a paper, read, write it, put it on the wall, on, on the roof on top, written maybe, I'll be a billionaire or whatever in one year. The way you bat begins to change. And some clothes you liked, you no longer wear them. Or when you speak about your business, the way you do conversations changes. Because you are, you are channeling your mind to abide in a certain place. What, is, what does it say, the scripture that I spoke about? Philippians 4, verse mm. 6. Verse 6 to 7. Verse six to seven. Mm -hmm. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, but in everything say in everything. Uh -huh. By prayer. By prayer. Now, it means everything you want to do, the vehicle has to be prayer. The word by, by is, uh, in English, they call them what? By is a, a word that speaks of the channel. By prayer. So in everything, the Bible is saying, do not be anxious in everything. But by prayer, it means when you see anxiety coming to a place where it is coming into your uh, atmosphere or in the sphere of your influence, it means that there is shortage of prayer. Uh -huh. And supplication. But by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. With thanks, 
giving. So there are three things that we are being taught right here. We are being taught that when you, when you see anxiety, all right, when you see anxiety, and anxiety is as a result of what? Look at this, everything. So when everything is put to play, there's going to be anxiety. But the Bible is saying that, read it by prayer. Uh-huh. And that by supplication. By prayer, supplication. With thanksgiving. All right. So by prayer, supplication, and the Bible says in addition, you... Thanksgiving is not on the field of these two things. That's why the Bible says with thanksgiving. I will explain why. All right. What happens? Let your request, Let your request be made known, be made known to, God. to God. Uh huh. And the peace of God. And the peace, yes. Which surpasses all understanding. Which surpasses all understanding. Will guide your heart. We what? We what? Will guide. Your heart. Uh huh. We what? Guide your heart. It is saying guide or guard. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not guide. Will guard your what? Your heart and what? And mine. So, so, so the, the focus is the mind and the heart. Help it. The focus is the mind and the heart. So, when anxiety comes, what is it attacking? The mind. And the heart. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Oh God. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse seventeen. So it too, it is about the mind and the heart. What is anxiety? Okay, who re, who reads that? Uh huh. Corinthians 3, verse 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second uh, Corinthians 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord is the Spirit. The Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, and where the Spirit is, there is liberty. It means if you are now getting to a place where you begin to abide in the atmosphere of God, liberty has to be seen. You cannot drink depression pills when you are abiding in the secret place. You have to be free. Uh, this word liberty, you know, I, I, I've been explaining that the biggest problem that we have encountered as believers is objectively not getting to a place where we understand what scripture says. You know, when the Bible speaks of salvation, many people think it's just salvation, I'm saved. Not understand that the entirety of your life is saved. So now your life is affected by what you believe. Do you know the Bible says, is she not a daughter of Abraham that she might receive healing and salvation? So when you get to understand that the Bible is saying, the Bible is bringing us to an aspect of understanding that where the spirit is, there is liberty. And you, 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 you are carrying the Holy Spirit. You. It means liberty must become your habitat. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's close in Matthew chapter number 6, verse 26 to 30. So because you are carrying the Holy Spirit, 
The Holy Spirit who enables you through even when you're speaking in tongues to communicate to God and live in the atmosphere of the heavens. What enables you, Matthew 6 verse 26 to 30. Who enables you to live in that environment. It is the same Holy Spirit that when you are to go through situations, the Bible says do not be anxious in anything. Don't be anxious. Amen. And I will show you why. So in everything through prayer and supplications with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not an activity, it is an attitude. These <laughs> prayer and supplication are activities. But thanksgiving, that's what the Bible says with because it's an attitude. Why? Because God is saying if there is anxiety, anxiety is an emotion, a feeling. So the only way to eliminate anxiety is to develop an attitude called thanksgiving. Let's go. Look at 6, uh, 26 to 30. <laughs> ah. All right, go go on top, go on uh, 25. Therefore, I say to you. Therefore, I say to you, do Masha. Not, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. Say, I will not worry. I will not worry. Uh, it's just a confession. Eh? <laughs> Say, I will not worry. So the Bible is saying, do not worry about your life. Mm -hmm. what, you will eat. what you will eat, the way you love food. The Bible says, don't worry about what you eat. When you are a chef, ne? you don't cook. I cook, yeah. I saw you cooking. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, what you will eat. What you eat. And what you will drink. And what you drink. So the Bible speaks, how many things did the Bible speak there? What you eat. And drink. Drink, uh-huh. Know about your body. Know about your body. What you put on. What you put on. Is not life more than food. Is not life more than food. Hey, this one, this one. This one, we are touching it. This is our next topic. Is not life more than what? Do you know that you stress to a dimension whereby you will now be surviving, not living? Is not life more important? And most of the things you stressed about got to be in order without even your effort but you remained sick. The thing you're stressing about that made you had a headache, it got sorted out without your effort, but you remained with a headache. Is not life more than what? Food. Let's go. And the body more than clothing. And the body more than clothing. What you are being told is you stress over what to wear to an extent that that body can become sick. While you are stressing of what to put on it. Have you ever seen people who work hard and they will not enjoy the man because they have destroyed the body that is supposed to enjoy the man? It's for another day. Uh huh. 26. Mm. Look at the birds. This is a command for you to go and study. Ah, you, you, are, you are not hearing me. God is giving you an experiment and saying, stay, look at the birds. Go outside your house huh? and stand. Look at the birds and learn. Uh-huh. They do not plant or harvest. They don't sow, they don't reap. So God is saying, I want you to go and study how the birds live. You don't see them carrying picks and shovels. Uh-huh. Um, and of gather into bags. 
They do not sow. They do not reap. They are not greedy to gather and to hold. They have no storehouse. Uh-huh. Yet your heavenly father needs them. Yet, not their father. Yet your father. Ah. Your heavenly father does what? Needs them. Uh-huh. Listen to me. This is not just a question. It's a rebuke to you who's worrying. Are you not what? Are you not of more value than a bed? Why don't you believe that God will provide for you? This one is tough. This one is tough. This one is tough. So when you are now to pray, you, you now pray with direction. Because we are being rebuked that the problem is we believe in God. But in as much as we say we believe in God, we are the one who grieve God. Because we do as if he does not love us. That's why we are rebuked. Are you not of more value? That he values you but the way we think. Of us thinking that God or oh, my father does not have the ability to take care of me. Makes him to be irresponsible when you are heard speaking something like that. Thinking something, thinking something like that grieves God. And he, Jesus says, remember what I said, Jesus comes as God. And what he's trying to do is to bring graphic myth, uh, metaphors, graphic pictures of the system of heaven to Things you can understand because he cannot really explain everything because the spiritual communications may not be understood by a man. So he says, let me speak about beds. He's not talking about angels. Ah, beds. Are you not better? And I love this verse. Are you not more valuable to God than the beds? Yet he clothes them Yet they neither sow nor reap, but they eat. Children of God, there is a dimension that I believe God that in this season of rest we must enter. Uh huh. Twenty-seven. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit? Which of you by worrying? Uh huh. Does worrying add anything to your life? Now, you realize that it seems as if it's statements, but Jesus is trying to bring men to the aspect whereby when you are to get into the secret place, you are in the right mind. Because the things he's speaking about are the things that hinder men from being in the secret place. He says, by worrying, have you changed your height? Does it change anything in your life? So, Jesus is trying to teach us that there is a dimension you must reach that in as much as you are in your body, but become rude to your environment. Ah, you are not here. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. Where you become so tough to yourself that you refuse to be a nobody. In as much as facts might say, but faith is saying. Mm. Let me explain something. What is worry? Worry is to, you know, to feel or, you know, cause to feel anxious. So worry is a feeling. Worrying is a cause to feel anxious. Remember what the Bible says in Philippians. Do not be anxious in anything. So worry fuels men to be what? Anxious. Hallelujah. To be anxious or trouble about actually potential problem, problems. So worry does not mean there is a problem. Worry is you prophesying that there's going to be a problem. 
You see, the, the, way, the way you worry that you not pay your rent at month end. Not that you have not paid. You have not yet arrived to the debt. But already you are programming yourself. Disarming yourself out of faith. By worrying that it cannot be. Oh God, oh God, I wish I had time. Let, let's do this sometime. Disarming yourself of faith. That I don't think I will pay on time. So already the enemy brings the picture of your landlord coming to knock so that you worry. So by worrying, your mind focuses on what you can't do. And already you disarm yourself from your authority and ability in God. And therefore that's how faith dies. Yeah, the Bible says the just shall not live by sight but by faith. The reason why he said that is because worry is eyes. The moment you worry, everybody who worries, there is something you are seeing. Hallelujah. Amen. So worry is what causes you to be anxious about potential, not actual, potential or actual problems. Problems. Hallelujah. Then, so, if worry is a feeling that causes anxiety, what is anxiety? To be anxious is a feeling or showing worry. Now, when you are now anxious, it is now, you are now showing it. You are no longer feeling it. You are now showing your worry. We see it on your face. When a person is anxious, they are everywhere. Showing your worry nervous and unease about something with an uncertain outcome. You are nervous and you are unease about something, but there is an uncertain outcome. You don't even have the solution. But it's showing that you are stressing about your bank account. So the word that we underline there is what? Nervous. Because worry is, shows nervousness. And what is nervousness? It's being easily agitated or alarmed. Are you, are you seeing the flow? Easily agitated. When, you, when, when you, you are anxious, you become nervous. When you are nervous, you just become agitated. That even when the child is saying, can I have some... <laughs> Daddy don't pass. Daddy have it. Can, can, can I take that bread? Do you work? Eh? Do you work? <laughs> you, <laughs> you are easily agitated. Something you are alarmed. You are, you are just alarmed. You just see a sound in the kitchen. What are you breaking? Will you buy it? <laughs> Agitated and alarmed. But this is where I want to go. What is being alarmed? Being alarmed is frightened or concerned that one may be in danger or that something undesirable will happen. So all this is showing us why Jesus says in the book of Matthew 6, do not worry. Because worry is about something that is not there. It's something that you create and it becomes tangible. So Jesus says, when you pray. Let's go. When you when you pray, go into your secret room and shut the door. We are going to shut the door today. I want you to understand and learn the art of shutting the door while you are where you are right there. Until you get to an aspect where you understand. Do you realize that in my days of prayer, you can't 
get hold of me. Because even a phone is needed. Is not needed in my secret. You, you, as time goes on, you will see the way I shut myself in the secret place on a Sunday. The next time you try, I will clap you. Because when I shut the door, I want him who sees in secret to reward openly. So you do not need to shout when you are now understanding what Jesus means by his concept of prayer. You can be just there. And sometimes to shut the door, it is what we are going to focus on much on our next sermon or message. Because shutting the door requires you to shut down any influence, frequency, or communication that can hinder you from being with God. So while you are where you are, maybe you are seated, you are standing, or you are leaning down. I want you right now to go before God. And this once you get to understand what I'm talking about, it will be very easy for you to even hear his voice. Do you remember in the book of Genesis when God created Adam? Listen to this. God created Adam and he put him in the garden. Adam was supposed to recreate everything. And Adam was not a physical man. He was supposed to have his communication and instruction from who? From God. So God would come at the cool of the day when you pray. Are you now understanding? Adam would pray at the cool of the day and God would come at the cool of the day. And listen, listen. And the Bible says, and Adam heard the voice of God walking. Eve did not hear the voice. God had not yet arrived, but God's voice was walking. Adam heard it. Why? Because in the secret place, there are communications. So why was God coming to Adam? God was coming to Adam to teach Adam about the systems of heaven. Until the day Adam opened the door and something was spoken to him. So that's why God says, who told you? Because if you are in the secret place, Adam, that thing you are imagining that you, you will be broke by the end of this year, your door is open. It needs to be shut. I want you to begin to speak to the Father. And remember, like what I said, he sees in secret. He sees in secret. Where you are going to pour out your life like Hannah. What made Hannah to be answered was not that she was praying, because even at home she was praying. But this time she poured out her heart in the secret place. I want you to just close your eyes wherever you are. Leherovala atumefele oreda kima. I want you to just close your eyes wherever you are. Begin to focus on the goodness of God. Lehus Eda. Father, we thank you. We abide in you. You are the king eternal. That I am that I am. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Until when you are praying, also your spirit is praying even something different in your heart. Until as much as you are speaking, you are praying in the outside, there is another prayer happening in the inside. Shut that door, shut that door, shut that door. Until you master the aspect of praying in the secret place. We thank you, Lord. You are the king eternal, the one who created the heavens and the earth.
the one who never changes, the one who never fails, the one who looks upon me and he's holding me with his right hand, the God who chose me and the God who loves me, the Lord God of heaven who leads me, who shepherds me, and I shall not want, the Lord who has anointed my head with the oil of gladness. I thank you and I bless your name. Tihavorei tahai. Akum makan tekom. Vi atoma nakapum mara halos evina. La koba akakom marate ilakonatama. I cannot lack. 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 The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I cannot lack. I cannot lack. In my insufficiency, the Lord shall make me sufficient. In the name and the blood of Jesus. He says, my grace, my grace, my grace, my grace shall be sufficient to you. Makomanai. Kebalotakai. Kahaibon tehaiden tehelepoa. Rakagaga kuka bakagaga kike gagada. Ibrudo akaguka. Lako gagabumana. Vele kakamanai. Ereyane ne umana omeye me mamua. Muamane savai don she. Yarotua la yata. Ekea, ekea. Thank you, Father. 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 You are putting everything to order. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are putting everything to order. Thank you, Father. Eko barahana kamona kahakalik onamai. Eko mana. With prayer and thanksgiving. With prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. You are praying. You are bringing your petitions with a heart of thanksgiving. You are speaking to God. You are telling God as your father. God, I need this aspect of my life to change. You are in the secret place with your father i may not be able to hear what you are saying but there is something i know god is hearing you he sees more in the secret place do you know the reason why the bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the lord when you begin to interact with god in your secret place your candle illuminates the entirety of your life and the god who sees in secret will see every aspect of your life where you are insufficient where you are insufficient. I say as we are praying tonight that insufficient is being filled. You are praying. You are praying tonight as we are praying right now. God is speaking a word. God is reassuring you. I know and I can hear it. God is reassuring you. You are speaking to him. You are speaking to him. You are bringing that vision before God. You are bringing that business idea before God. You are bringing that financial situation before God. There is a reassurance. There's a real assurance. I know that words might not be coming out, but there is something bubbling in the inside. Close the door in the secret place. No problem is allowed there. No situation is allowed there. No anxiety is allowed there. You are only speaking possibilities. You are building that house in the secret place. You are building that business in the secret place. In the secret place. In the secret place. Akuna mahagua ya balahano ma me Fredia ontan makre de ve olaiton me hebrole kon maronde kambre de aluta mahakre de bontan me revele akrande komba raite leito ramalangara lika borate lika tumana vale gabore de utini moyaka rado de tante into manai bereila no kombra de ka elego barade leito ne maranga la me deito e ibele donta lai bereida lai oreida Oh, la dua revo la mama mua wa palo fa la kuras la isho la mama ma bereta la kasko la banakata ezo barata la kanomana we thank you mari god we thank you mari father in the name of jesus you see that energy you are feeling is not from just praying 
That's the present. This is practical. What's, what's happening to your eyes? They are dim. What's happening to your eyes? What's happening to your eyes? Now, that atmosphere, that atmosphere is the same atmosphere that happens when you are prophesying. There is a dimness that comes. You are no longer here. It comes. It takes over. I'm teaching practicals. So that atmosphere, that atmosphere, even visions, you can see them. So the Lord said, let us go back. And we are going to be dwelling much on this because every other thing we will teach and can be taught. But this is what God has sent me to do. We have to understand the communications with God practically. I want you to just say this word. God, you are great. I say, God, you are great. God, you are great. Father, you are great. Father, you are gracious to me. Father, you are gracious to me. Father, you are gracious to me. Father, I'm in your hand. Father, I'm in your hand. Father, I'm in your hand. Don't let me go. What, 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 the moment I said, Father, I'm in your hand, what happened to your feet? Now, it seems like a declaration, but I want you every day to begin to flow in that atmosphere. The moment I said, Father, I'm in your hand, it seems like you were lifted from the ground in the inside, like your spirit was put somewhere. This seems like small things, but they will help you in your prayer life. And every time you pray, remember these words, God sees in secret. And remember, God knows. When you go down that scripture, the Bible says, God knows what you want. That's in Matthew 6.33. The Bible says, God knows what you want, but seek it first. He knows. So if he knows, why are you going there? You're going there so that you can have access to those things I was speaking about in the beginning. Through righteousness, you unlock the secret place. And in the secret place, what is in the secret place? In the secret place, there is reward. Those that come to God must know that he is and he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. For everybody listening to the sound of my voice, may you show your grace. May you prove yourself to be the God that you are. Thank you for lifting us. Thank you for showing yourself. Thank you, mighty God, for meeting us at the point of our needs. In Jesus' name. And I pray for everybody who is tithing. I pray for everybody who is giving. Lord, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. May you bring a blessing. Mighty God, I pray. May you show yourself with your provision. In insufficiency, may you be sufficient. In the name of Jesus. Amen.